Just over a year ago, Paul Curtis was busy protecting his own life, dodging bullets in Iraq as an army pilot. Now he's saving other people's. And today he's got a new co-pilot for company. There's just something endlessly appealing about a machine that can move you around in three dimensions. Nothing else can do that. You must be so used to just scanning for landing sites constantly. Are you always looking? Yeah. It's, when you arrive at a detail at an incident, you have literally, not seconds, but maybe a minute or two to see the incident, to find it, and then to see where it's best, not only for safety landing, but in terms of access to a road, like that's the main 864, you know, if there was an incident at that junction, you know, you'd have to locate the incident and assess where it's best to land the crew. So it's no good you landing safely and closely, but there's something between you so they couldn't get there? Yeah, the drainage ditches. You always got to think about access out of fields and other you know, gates, gaps in hedges and that sort of thing. Which is, that's so half the skill with this job, it's just knowing the best place for the paramedics land. I mean, then you can land, you know, beside an incident, but then you've got to think about what's best for the paramedics. It's like riding a bicycle. If you think about it, you suddenly can't... Don't, I'm going to talk... Look at the weather. It's nice up here, isn't it? Think about it, it's lovely. Think yeah. about something else, because if you unraveled the secret too much, you wouldn't be able to do it. Well, there's a, yeah, there's a, a bit, bit to it, not too much. And you're relying on the paramedics. The paramedic might, might be sat with a map. He's doing the navigating, sort of seeing where you are, where you're going to. And there's a lot of stuff to take on board. Plus and you've quite got often getting information from the ground as well. Yeah, you've got ambulance control to speak to on that. You've got air traffic to speak to on that. You've got satellite phones, so you might have the air desk back at base giving you updates on location. So there's all those radios to... Uh, to think about as well as the map reading and when you get to the obviously uh, best place for them to land. And this is what you were saying about, I suppose, between getting the call and by the time you get here, getting close to it, all of a sudden it's expanded and you're fitting in with a massive operation. Yeah. It's, uh, but broken down, it's just about prioritising, multitasking it. So it's I'd get a big headache. No, you'd be right. No, no. <laughs> I'd get a big headache. I've seen you drive. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. <laughs> Last time I did that, I ended up in the back of one of these, and I wasn't flying that then either. 